Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. So in this video, I just want to do a brief tribute to an actress who left us way too young. Um, and it's an actress who passed away at only the age of 38, uh, back in 1972. The actress I want to talk about is Janet Munro. Now, Janet Munro, I'm not going to give you the whole Wikipedia stuff. You can look that up for yourself. Uh, but just to briefly touch upon some of her films, Janet Munro was really um, came to the fore by being noticed by Disney and she had a contract with them. And so really the first film of note, I suppose, is Darby O'Gill and the Little People, uh, in which she co-starred alongside Sean Connery back in 1959. Um, but then she also went on to make some other films for Disney. In fact, she had a five film contract, but uh, didn't actually fulfill the full five films. Gosh, try saying that quickly. So some of the other films that she appeared in for Disney included this one, Swiss Family Robinson, um, that starred John Mills and James MacArthur, a really good shipwrecked drama. And the one that I particularly like, in fact, it's one of my all time favorite live action Disney films from the 60s. And it's this one, Third Man on the Mountain. Uh, and this one also has James MacArthur in it. And this is based uh, loosely on true events um, set in Switzerland. And James MacArthur, it's a coming of age story here where his father was a renowned mountain climber who had tried to climb the Citadel mountain that's in the Alps and had met his death and uh, young James MacArthur here really wants to uh, confront that situation and learn to climb the mountain himself. I really really love this drama. I think it's absolutely a, a great Disney film. Now the interesting thing actually is that this is set in the Swiss Alps, and before Janet Munro uh, got into doing Disney films, she was actually in this film, which I've talked about before on my channel, The Crawling Eye. This was released um, as part of a double feature in America with The Abominable Snowman. So please do check out my previous video on The Abominable Snowman if you haven't done so already. A great Hammer movie with Peter Cushing. Uh, but yeah, in this one, very different circumstances in the Swiss Alps. This is one that um, involves a radioactive cloud that's in the Swiss Alps. And there's this tentacled eye monster that's uh, inhabiting the clouds and causing some havoc. So we've got Forrest Tucker here, who also went to star on uh, in The Abominable Snowman. And here you can see uh, a young Janet Munro. And this is a really fun little monster flick from 1957, uh, I think. Um, but yeah, well worth seeking out. But like I say, Janet Munro didn't actually fulfill her full five film contract with um, Disney. Sorry. Um, but she did move on to make some other movies. And particularly the film that I absolutely love is this one, The Day the Earth Caught Fire, a fantastic British film from 1961 uh, that's directed by Val Guest. Um, this one really, it's a disaster movie, if you like. This uh, great premise, this, it involves um, atomic bomb testing that's been going on in the Antarctic. Um, and the extent of this bombing has actually caused the Earth to tilt on its axis. Um, and then this creates some catastrophic weather events um, and a perilous situation for Earth as it starts to head toward the sun. Um, so, yeah, really, really great movie, this. Uh, it's set in London, um, and really it focuses on a team of journalists who are trying to uh, report on what is happening and all the different weather events um, and uh, how they may have been caused. Um, so it's actually very talky and, and really fast script, uh, but really, really well scripted and just some fantastic little effects uh, for the time as well. They are shot in black and white, um, but they use lots of matte paintings. They do incorporate some sort of live uh, newsreel footage, if you like, of actual weather events, and they put that into some of the scenes as well. This film really, really grabs you right from the very outset, uh, where with the opening scene, which is filmed in a sepia tone, and you're just seeing a central character walking down a deserted London street. There's dust and ash, and clearly it's intensely hot 
there as well and uh, a really low score a music score that just gives this sort of ominous thrum uh, and it really grabs you and you're wondering you know what has happened here and then uh, the main character starts to recount events um, so yeah Janet Monroe's role in this uh, actually really grounds the film as well and makes it a very human drama uh, because uh, she works at the newspaper um, here and uh, has a, a relationship with one of the main reporters um, really nice role for her uh, and she's very good in it uh, and this also co-stars Leo McKern as one of the uh, newspaper reporters now interestingly Janet Munro and Leo McKern reunite in another film uh, and it's a 1964 film called A Jolly Bad Fellow um, and uh, yeah this is a really really good uh, movie and it's um, completely different from uh, the day the earth caught fire and in this film uh, actually Leo McKern and uh, Janet Munro have a very flirtatious relationship but it's very much a kind of black comedy uh, film in which Leo McKern is a sort of professor who is really disenchanted with all his colleagues and people who are gossips and things like that and he wants to basically do away with them and so he's invented a kind of um, serum or a gas that will uh, actually um, cause people to change their behavior, laugh, do strange antics and then die. Um, and yeah, Janet Monroe's character is really caught up with Leo McKern in this film. Uh, like I say, it's a very flirtatious relationship um, and um, yeah, a really, really good film. Now, we also have a film from the 60s, and it's called Life for Ruth. Uh, and this is a really, really interesting one. It's directed by Basil Dearden, um, who's a director that's certainly got a few films in the Criterion collection, um, and one of which is All Night Long, uh, which is a sort of Othello-based uh, drama with jazz set in London and starring Patrick McGowan. Now, Patrick McGowan is also in Life for Ruth, playing a doctor, uh, which is a really, really fascinating kind of drama. Um, it's it's set in Durham and uh, it concerns father and a mother, uh, played by Michael Craig and Janet Munro. Uh, their child is involved in an accident uh, at sea and uh, gets rushed to hospital and needs to have a blood transfusion. But here's where it gets interesting, uh, because Michael Craig has very strong religious beliefs and he will not agree uh, to the blood transfusion. So difficult circumstances uh, his wife played by Janet Munro um, kind of has to support her husband but at the same time uh, obviously wants uh, the best for her child uh, now the child actually dies and um, although the father is excused of any wrongdoing at an inquest uh, Patrick McGowan as the doctor is having none of that and so uh, creates a legal action against the father and so we then have the drama uh, that then uh, ensues from that so yeah really really interesting film this um, and this was actually the only film uh, for Janet Munro where she actually got a nomination at BAFTA for her acting um, actually I would have liked to have seen more of her in this film the film really does kind of focus more on Michael Craig and uh, Patrick McGowan uh, but yeah she has quite a difficult role here because she has to be supportive of her husband but at the same time obviously uh, wanting the best for her child so she's in quite a difficult situation there um, but yeah really really interesting film um, and absolutely worth seeing Life for Ruth. And then finally, just coming on to a film from 1968, and it's called Sebastian. Um, and this one actually um, has Dirk Bogard headlining the cast. And, and it's a film that's um, partly produced by Michael Powell from the great Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger um, relationship. But yeah, this was a film that I think Michael Powell actually wanted to direct himself. Uh, circumstances didn't uh, lend itself to that. And so he stayed on as a producer. Um, and uh, yeah, so we've got Dirk Bogard and Susanna York are the, uh, the primary roles in this. Uh, but Janet Munro certainly has an interesting um, supporting performance in this. Now, the film is very, very bizarre. It's a, basically a sort of Cold War code breaking uh, kind of film with Dirk Bogard as the um, head of a 
team of code breakers uh, and uh, all of these code breakers are mainly women and uh, actually the film concerns a lot of his relationships with these women mostly with Susanna York um, who is gorgeous in this and uh, really good but yeah the actual story itself is not a great deal to it uh, and in fact the film never really finds its footing in terms of what story it's trying to tell uh, but nonetheless it's a real sort of swinging 60s kind of film lots of music on the score very colorful um and like i say janet munro has a very interesting role here as a kind of boozy actress who uh, encourages dirk bogard's character to take some uh, drugs um so yeah quite an interesting role for her um, now, in her own private life, Janet Monroe uh, at this stage was going through her second marriage um, and uh, she was actually married to uh, this guy, Ian Hendry. Now, any guesses as to what I'm holding up here or which booklet uh, this belongs to? If Let me know in the comments if you recognise uh, what this may be from. Uh, but yeah, Ian Hendry, she was married to him, second marriage. Um, sadly, there seems to have been some complications in the marriage. So uh, in the latter part of her life, uh, Janet Munro um, had some miscarriages. She had uh, relationship problems with Ian Hendry. There's some alcohol issues. Um, and then sadly, it seems that in 1972, uh, there were heart complications for her and she passed away, like I say, at only the age of 38. Really, really tragic it just breaks my heart when you read about um, some of these actresses that have died at such a young age and actors as well um, but anyway so I suppose yeah I just wanted to do this brief tribute like I say uh, the crawling eye was a little bit close to me because I watched that as part of the abominable snowman double bill uh, did a video on that and then like I say I love the day the earth caught fire um, so yeah I just think it's worthwhile talking about Janet Munro here um, and her filmography I haven't touched on all of her films there's another film I haven't seen of hers that's called Bitter Harvest uh, and I would like to see that one but that one doesn't seem to be available um, in a copy that I can readily see um, some of these films uh, Life for Ruth Sebastian uh, I watched on YouTube um, but yeah let me know in the comments if you know Janet Monroe's films uh, if you've enjoyed them which ones you like um, and uh, yeah please do leave some comments I do like reading those uh, thank you to specifically to Lita Dabble uh, who has been um, commenting on my channel and I really do appreciate that actually um, you've helped me a little bit more than you realize uh, because I've had a bit of a, a down slump this week and I did want to get some videos out and uh, so you've helped me to just get that done so thank you very much like I say comments do really help at times you don't know how much okay um, please do join me again for some more videos I hope to be back with some more stuff soon um, hope everyone's doing well all the best to you see you again bye bye